Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. I'm going to start putting back together our whole machine system. And I think to make it look interesting and a lot better than just a random collection of machines on the ground than before, I'm going to make a little spot for them, but I don't want to make like a, a little wood hut like this. I don't feel like that really makes that much sense with heavy machinery. I want something more industrial and something that actually kind of seems out of place. So I think I'm going to clear out a space here and then probably fill it in with some stone and stuff like that. I've cleared out a space here and I think I'm going to fill it with a layer of cobblestone. And let's try... Zag. How's this look? Yeah. I like it. Oh yeah, I should probably put this one layer down, too. My shovel broke, so this is a good opportunity to show you how repairing Tinker's tools goes. Uh, normally vanilla tools, when they break, they just completely disappear, but Tinker's tools can always be repaired. I haven't actually done this before, so I think this is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> um, you put the broken tool on the tool station, and just like you can make modifications here, I think you can also put in the dominant material and repair it. Yes. So it's made out of cobalt, so just stick a cobalt ingot in there. Looks like it takes two of them, and it's back up to full. That's the wrong slot. I wonder, will it take all of them, or just as many as it needs, if I have six in there? Just as many as it needs. There we go. Nice little place to put our machines. It's got a really cool pattern in it, too. I thought the zigzag pattern was just within the block itself. I didn't know it was... Like this huge pattern that shows up when you put a bunch of them down. Let's get the machines placed. This final connection should hook up the power system. Alright, so from... Whoop. Ah, let's just go up here. From here we go over to this power pole. Kind of goes through the trees. I love how power poles work. I mean, how they look. This looks so cool. Goes along here. Land goes down all the machines. They should have power. They don't have power. <laughs> okay. Um. Hmm. Did I connect to the wrong side of the bat box? The bat box does have power. Yes. Yep. It's. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. It's losing power. You know what it is? Ah, oh, crap. I hate EU. I like RF so much better. It's so much easier to use. Um... The EU power system has loss over time. If you look at, like, a tin cable, for example, it says... Loses 0.2 EU per block. I wasn't sure whether these wires also had a similar loss, but I think that's telling me it does. Because it only starts out at 32 EU, and it travels so far to get here, I think maybe it's losing so much by the time it gets here that it doesn't have anything to deliver. And it's just evaporating. That's the only thing I can imagine it would be. Um, I guess we can test that, can't we? Let's move this closer in the chain. So... Hold on, I can't sprint. So if we move this here, for example... Yeah, it does get power. But very slowly. Ah, it's transmission loss, no! How do I deal with this? There we go, now it works. So because EU has the transmission loss over time, or not over time, but over distance, and RF doesn't, I just moved the conversion of the power from all the way over there to all the way over here. So it's all the way, it's RF, all the way from the water mill, right until pretty much the very end, and then it gets converted, transformed into EU, and then goes to the machines. So now it actually works, plus it should be a lot more efficient than 
it, I, yeah, it'll actually be a lot more efficient than it even was back at my old base. Because even that had a bit of a distance to it, and this one is very, very short. From the EU power source to the destination. Okay, machines are running. Let's get them set up with some automation, some chests and some pipes and stuff. All done. Four chests feeding into all these four machines, and then four pipes coming out into four chests for all the results. For a macerator, electric furnace, compressor, and metal former. Okay, I think the only major thing left to set up is the Tinker Smeltery. Oh yeah, one of the things I should make that I keep forgetting to, so let's actually do it right now, is a drawer key. So it's just some gold plus an upgrade template, which is just some wood in a, in a drawer. That's the template you use for um, all the drawer upgrades, for upgrading the space that they can hold and giving them special properties and stuff. But the point of a drawer key is it allows you to lock your drawers. Not that you can't use them, but rather that um, it basically locks in whatever item they have in them as being... It's, it says this is the item that is supposed to be in here. Always. Because right now I run into the problem where like, let's say I want this wood. Now it's gone. Now the drawer is just totally blank. And you can put anything in there and... You know, I, I meant for this to be the spot for this type of wood, but since I've taken it all out, now the spot's gone. So if you use the drawer key on the, the drawer controller, you notice this little locked icon shows up on all the drawers. So we can toggle them all. You can also do it on individual drawers if you want, but doing the drawer controller does them all. And that makes sure that if you take everything out of it like I just did, you can see the icon still there. There isn't actually any wood in it, but it, it basically is reserved the spot. So when you've got everything locked into place kind of where you want it, it's a good idea to lock the drawer so it doesn't get all messed up. And it's pretty flexible too. Locking the drawer doesn't prevent you from putting items into spaces that are already blank. So you don't have to like unlock, if I want to add something new, I don't have to unlock all the drawers and then add something. I can just add it in and now I can't take it out. So very nice. I'm thinking I'll have a second little, uh, not exactly a room, but I guess like a platform here. Just for the smeltery. Oh, am I out? Ah, oh, I am out. And then I'll have like a little opening here. And then eventually I'll put stairs here. Yeah, it should be big enough for the smeltery, and now that I've taken out those blocks, I can fill that in. I should probably put a backing in, too. I need more cobble, but I'll deal with that later. Um, pretty soon I'm going to be able to make... Well, actually, I mean, I already can make it. I just need to actually get down and do it. Um, I can make a cobble gem, which will just infinitely generate cobblestone for me without me having to mine it, which will be super handy. All right, well, I think I've got it set up pretty well. Kind of had to expand, expand the platform a bit to... Uh, just make it feel right. It was way too cramped before, plus I wanted room to put in all these tool stations and part builders and stuff. So I've got it set up, I've got four stations ready to pour out. I didn't make a redstone clock for this one, because I don't think I'll really need it that much. And yeah, they're all pumping out into this chest. Little extra chest here just for like extra ingot casts, because I can't have duplicate casts inside of the cast chest. Just takes one of each. Yeah, pretty happy about it. I also did a little bit of tidying up. So the I think I've mentioned this before, the puzzle doesn't turn into grass, and if it doesn't turn into grass, I can't do that and turn it into a path. And I want to make paths between stuff. So I'm trying to turn a bunch of stuff into grass. So I just took all this out and replaced it with dirt so that the grass would spread. You just saw it spread right there. So once that's all grass, I'll make it into a path. I also expanded this over one more, so it's not just one wide, two wide. And also got rid of some of the puzzle around here and replaced it with dirt so that this whole thing will be a path. By the way, I haven't harvested, like, anything from my garden. <laughs> I should probably do that. Yeah, actually, that's a good time to focus on food. That's one of the things that I don't have any sort of storage for, and I haven't harvested the garden. So let's focus on food, and I think I'm actually going to make a bit of a kitchen. Our nutrition is in a very sorry state. <laughs> No dairy, fruit, or protein. Whew. It's amazing I'm still alive. 
To try to remedy that, I'm going to make the whole suite of cooking for blockhead stuff. I don't know how all this stuff works together, but I think it's going to be very helpful, so let's just do it. Put it all together and see how it works. Uh, first thing is I need cooking for blockheads 2 to make the cooking table. I think this is kind of like one of the most important pieces to the whole thing. As it says, enables crafting abilities, which is pretty important. And that requires this book, which requires a couple diamonds, plus the original book, which is made from a normal book. And you just burn the book and it turns into cooking for blockheads 1. Not sure how that works. But let's make that. Then if we plop that in here, we get the cooking table. And then here, furnace, some black stained glass, and some iron to make an oven. Chest and iron door to make a fridge. Iron, water, wood to make a sink. Iron nuggets and some slabs to make a tool rack. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to make is the tools. Well, I'll get to that in a bit. Just a single slab to make a spice rack. Black hardened clay and oak chest to make a kitchen counter. So this is a multi-block structure, so I'm pretty sure I can make as many of these things as I want. Like, I could probably put down as many kitchen counters as I want. But I don't know what the purpose of that would be, because I don't know how this stuff works just yet. I know one of the things it's going to allow us to do, though, is when we go to cook Pam's Harvest Craft stuff, like, let's say... One of the things I want to make is veggie strips. Hmm. Now that I look at it, though, it doesn't have any nutrients assigned to it. The ingredients that make it up do, but the final thing doesn't. Hmm. Well, anyway. Um, I think pretty much all the Pam's Harvest Craft stuff involves prep on some sort of a, like, tool or bakeware. Like this bakeware, some things use pans and, and whatnot. Where are they? Let's see if they're all grouped together. God, there's so many. Uh, yeah, here it is. Juicer, mixing bowl, mortar and pestle, or pestle, bakeware, saucepan, skillet. So there's all these things, and instead of having to have them on you at all times, um, I think you can kind of like store them in the tool rack, and it'll just automatically use them when you need to for a recipe. So it should be very handy. I'm just going to set this up in some temporary area first. Oven. I don't... Mm, hmm. I'm not sure if it matters where I put this stuff. I expected the cooking table to connect to the other stuff, but it didn't. Maybe it just has to be next to it. Uh, really? I think I need to put a block behind it so it has something to go on. Spice rack, tool rack. Okay. Can you... Yeah, I think you can just put anything on these. Probably anything on this, too. Hmm. Okay. So, oven. Place for pots and pans. Oh, it takes fuel, right? That makes sense. I have no idea what these sections are for. Cooking table. Select an item on the right to see its recipe. Salt. Ah, oh, right, you can just infinitely craft salt for some weird reason, just using a uh, pot and water. Missing tools to craft. So I think it's the pot that I'm missing. I think I have the water bucket. Technically, I don't... Oh, hmm. I thought the sink provided water. Does it not? Oh, it's got its own tank. It doesn't seem to have any sort of a GUI, but you can see the tooltip at the top. It says tank, and it's like a little bit blue. Yeah, and I can pull from it, so... It's not an unlimited source of water, it looks like. It just holds a bunch of water. Um, but I could create a pump that would uh, just pump water to it and keep it filled. I mean, I don't know if I actually can make that right now, but eventually I'll be able to do that. So that should allow me... Hmm. That's filled with water, which should provide the bucket full of water to this, but it doesn't. It only recognizes it if it's in my inventory. 
Kitchen counter. That's just storage. Fridge. Also just storage. Is a kitchen counter any different from a fridge in terms of functionality? Obviously, it looks different. But the fridge is a lot more expensive to make, and they both have the same storage space. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go read up on how these blocks work together to see if I'm missing something. Okay, it doesn't look like I'm missing anything major from the functionality. This is basically how it's supposed to work. Um, but I just made a bunch of bakeware. All the bakeware. Mixing bowl, mortar, and pestle. I, I never can remember if it's pestle or pestle. I don't know if you pronounce the T. Bakeware, saucepan, skillet, pot. I think that's it. And that's obviously not going to be enough room for everything, so I made a bunch more tool racks. Yeah, each one can hold two. Is that everything? Yeah. Okay, so now I just need some actual ingredients, huh? Let's just go pick some random stuff from the garden, because I haven't really picked anything. And just see what we can make. What have we got? Some carrots. Rhubarb. Radish. Zucchini. Sweet potato. Leek. Beans. Spice leaf? Mm. Garlic. Tomato. Okay, let's try those. Surely I can make something with that. So if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, I can just throw these in, like, the kitchen counter. Let's try the kitchen counter. Yeah, another recipe show up. So I imagine I could probably throw it inside of the fridge as well. Yep, so it looks like the fridge and the counter function the same. I guess the fridge is just for aesthetics or something. Um, let's see if I could throw these on the spice rack. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm doing this all wrong. It's showing up all the time. Oh, no, never, never mind. I did it right. Because <laughs> it will show up in here if I just have the stuff in my inventory, but... Uh, for some reason I thought that I had it in my inventory, but no, I had it in the fridge, the kitchen counter, and then the fridge. Never mind. So it does work in both. Um, but yeah, it looks like you can't put stacks in this thing. Can you... Oh no, you can. If you open up the menu instead of doing it the other way. So that didn't quite fit at all, but those are the same recipes. So yeah, it looks like the spice rack, the kitchen counter, and the fridge all function the same. They're just simple storage, and as long as the cooking table is, I guess, near them, it can access it. Alright, so that's solved. Missing two... Oh, I didn't make everything. I didn't make the cutting board. It's gotta be easy to make. Oh, easy peasy. Take a quick little nap. I have no wood. I can fix that. Boop. Hmm. Interesting question I have, though. If I put a tool not on a tool rack, but just like in the spice rack, can it access it? Ah, it can. Okay, so yeah, it really doesn't really matter what you put stuff in. It's mostly just visual. Just as long as it's in a inventory of some sort, they can access it. Alright. Large meal. Fruit salad. Man, look at how much food saturation there restores. Like, almost a full bar. And 3% fruit. I could really use that. Nice. <laughs> I can make ketchup. 
tomato in a juicer, stock, carrot in a pot. Man, that's a bland stock. Usually stock is made out of just a combination of tons of different vegetables to give you a complex flavor, but stock made out of a single ingredient. That's just sad. Edible root. No thanks. Oh, you can even make the juices here. Oh yeah, the juicer is a tool. Oh, I could just bake the sweet potato. Alright, so this is mostly working, but the sink still doesn't seem to be working. It's... the um, the whole salt thing still isn't popping up as a possibility. Even though it has water in it. Yeah, now it does pop up. Fresh water and salt. Why? Why, why, why? It's right next to it. Does it need to be more full? Is there like a minimum amount it needs to have? That wouldn't make any sense, would it? Well, let me get more water. Oh yeah, I, I guess that was the problem. That's so odd. One bucket's worth of water in inventory can turn into fresh water or salt, but one, bur one bucket's worth of water in the sink can't be turned into anything. Weird. But now we can make fresh water and salt. Can I eat it? Bah, useless. Okay. Well, now it's just a matter of picking a bunch of ingredients and tossing them all in here. I guess what I should do with my garden, however, is probably separate out the Pam's Harvest Craft from the other stuff. Because if I just, like, I want to be able to process this stuff pretty fast. And some of this stuff, I'm sure, can't really be used in recipes, like... I mean, like, cotton? I think cotton technically... The Pam's Harvest Craft cotton, where is it? There. It is a grain, it says, so it does have some sort of nutrient value. But it's not used in any actual cooking recipes. Oh, biomash. <laughs> I'm not going to make biomash, no thanks. So, like, this is the sort of thing I wouldn't want with the Pam's Harvest Craft stuff. I don't want to gather everything. Like, I don't know, rice seeds? I don't know if that's used. Industrial hemp definitely is not used in any nutritive way. That's just for immersive engineering building. So I want to separate it out so that I can, like, go for the food section of the farm and just grab everything and then just dump it all into the kitchen. And then there's the other section. So I think I'm going to do that, separate it out, and I'm also going to find a real place to put this stuff. I'm thinking something sort of like that. I'm nowhere near done, of course, but... Uh, I'm going to cut out, punch out some holes for windows, I think, and stuff like that, and probably put a roof on it. But I like these two big, just completely open doorways. It makes it feel nice and open, you know? You can just literally run through it. And you don't have to fiddle with doors. I'm trying to go, I guess... I guess I'm kind of establishing a bit of an open... kind of aesthetic, like this. Where there's not just one little doorway that you have to open. There's actually no doors, there's just doorways that are kind of big and open and very easy to just sprint on through. And then I'm gonna have all the baking stuff on, I guess, one side and the other side? I wonder if you have baking, like the baking table on one side, I wonder if it could see things not directly connected to it over here. Most likely not, but maybe. I'm also going to cut out the bottom, just like I did here. So it's going to look like it's a platform up on legs and not just one gigantic block. So it seems that the cooking table over here and the kitchen counter with all the ingredients over here do not see each other. But I've got a hunch. Because it is able to see anything that's like here, for example. It can see anything on the spice rack. I think it just needs to have blocks that are from the cooking uh, for blockheads just adjacent to one of them. And I'm going to guess that it forms a sort of network. So let me see if this works. I've got a hunch that I can connect this to that just by making a chain of spice racks. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll go overboard just to make absolutely sure. Aha! Yes! It works! And now let's just take some of these away and make sure that I just need, like... That. It's probably just that one, right? Yeah, look at that. Okay, so I can just, like, put spice racks all around this place. Um, hopefully I can find a way to make them look better. 
but yeah, I can totally utilize both sides of this place as one entire kitchen. Cool. Let's get the rest of this set up. Alright, I think this is looking pretty good. Got everything mostly set up. Um, I didn't punch any holes in the wall for windows because I can't really figure out a way to make it work. I mean, this has all the tools here. And this side has all the spice racks. I don't need all these spice racks. But... I can't punch them all out because I need a spice rack here to connect to the kitchen counter to make sure that this cooking table actually sees everything that's on this side. So the most I could do is make, like, if I wanted to be symmetrical, make, um, just punch these two things out and just make a little two-wide window, but that would be so small. Just a single two-wide window on one side of the kitchen would just look odd. So I think I'm just going to use these kind of open doorways as hopefully having enough light. I think, it, I think it feels pretty open. It doesn't feel too stuffy. Alright, um, I'm going to tend to the garden, separate them out, but I also want to get a bunch of new things to plant. Let's get even more of those bundles of stuff. There's a bunch of them here, these shaded gardens. Um, I don't need these anymore. I need, I need this space a lot more. <laughs> Here we go. It's gonna be a bonanza of food. Just hoping for soy. I know there's different types of shaded gardens. I don't know if they have different names or if they're all called shaded garden, but there's ones in different biomes that I think give you different seeds. So it's possible you can't even get soy here. Looks like all of them. What have we gotten? I think it's all the same stuff we've gotten before. Radish. Oh, tea leaf. I think that's new. Blackberry. That's also new. Scallion. I think that's new. Turnip might also be new. Okay, we got some new stuff. So yeah, it might not be possible to get to get uh, soy here. Oh, wow. Here's a bunch more. Might have to go for a different biome for that. Yeah, nothing new. Otherwise, this spot would be occupied. Just the same stuff. So I think this is everything that comes from Shaded Gardens from the sort of a biome. That's alright. It's plenty to work with. Alright, let me go get the garden sorted out. Most of the garden's filled out now. Got a really nice variety of crops. So all the Pam's Harvest Grass stuff is everything from this line to the right. So I could just harvest all of that and just toss it all in those, in those kitchen counters. And then fry it up. Or bake it up, or steam it up, chop it up. Whatever ups we happen to do using all these tools. So let's do a bunch of stuff in here. I want to make sure I don't accidentally put in something. Like, some of the stuff is definitely used in recipes like beetroot, but I think to keep things simple, I'm going to try to go with just stuff from Pam's Harvest Craft. I think that'll keep things very simple and straightforward. Unless that, like, seriously limits the recipes that I can do, which it might. I mean, I'm not seeing too many things here. Can make flour. If I make flour, can I then make something else? Doesn't look like it. Ketchup, stock, grilled mushroom, flour, edible root, baked sweet potato. Okay, this stuff sucks. <laughs> what am I missing? Is it because I don't have any water? Is that needed for, like, everything? Hmm. It might be. Or maybe I just need more of a variety of stuff from other biomes. Let me try getting a couple things of water and just see if my possibilities explode. Not... Really? Did anything even change? Huh. What are all of these recipes taking that I just don't have? 
Yeah, I think it's mostly just that I need a greater variety of ingredients. And I do seem to need some of the vanilla ingredients, not just Pam's Harvest Craft stuff. Especially pretty commonly, there's like wheat to make bread and dough and stuff like that. Very important and tons of baked goods, you know, pretzels and whatnot. Pretzels, pies, bread-based products are super common, so I'm definitely going to need that. Um, butter's also pretty important, so I'm going to need milk. Yeah, I think those are some of the basics, just general variety. I just need to go to other biomes and find different collections of seeds. And I also need a good source of water, good source of wheat so I can make dough. I need milk so I can make butter. But uh, just by going out there and harvesting what I've got and adding a greater variety to here, I've still got some decent options, especially a cup of tea. I can make a cup of tea. You just burn a tea leaf and you have a cup of tea. And it gives you 2% vegetable as your nutrients, which doesn't make any sense. But I'll take it. What? Oh. I need something to burn. Right. Can you burn a chest? Alright, cool. Oh, it does them all at the same time. Here, keep burning chests. <laughs> it's made out of dark wood. I got so much of that. Oh my god, I've got a cup of tea. I love this. And that single-handedly just got my vegetables up to 92%. I don't remember what it was before. But each one was 2%. That's really good. Yeah, and I really need soybeans. Also, so I can get milk and... Or, no. Uh, soy milk. Which is like a, a substitute for milk, I think? Yeah, I think soy milk actually is a substitute for milk, so actually I don't think I do need milk. I just need soy milk. But let's see what else we can make. Something that gives us other types of nutrients. Oh, there also might be some prere prerequisites that I need to make before I see other recipes. Like, maybe if I make stock, for example. Yeah, so you make stock, and now look, some other things are available. Like gravy, garden soup, tomato soup. So some of these things, I just need to make them. And then it'll give me more options. Baked sweet potato. Well, that's not going to work. I don't really have any fuel in there. Now I can make... <laughs> I can make seed soup. Ew. Yeah, a lot of these don't have nutrients, sadly. So I'm going to have to be kind of picky about what I make. But fruit salad. 3% fruit. That is fantastic. Let's make a bunch of that. Because my fruit's at... What, 0%? Oh, sorry, 1%. Yeah, alright. So a lot of work still left to be done, but um, this is enough to allow me to make enough food to keep myself going and get some of my nutrients up really well. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return... Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to pretty up the place. I haven't done any sort of chiseling bits or anything this, to this thing, so from the outside it just looks like a gigantic rectangular shell. So I'm going to go a little bit like all in with chiseling bits, and I'm going to make stairs for all these places and whittle this down so it doesn't look so blocky, make stairs, stairs, stairs here, make pathways going from things, just generally kind of improve the base, and then move on to something new, because we truly are established even better than before at this point. We've got machinery, we have storage, which we didn't have before in any proper way like this. We've got cooking, which we didn't really have before. Smell tree set up better than ever. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. So, hope you enjoyed so far, and we'll get into some beautification and new stuff in the next episode. <laughs>